Hello everyone and welcome back to the series where I demo the world's weirdest guitars. Today we are checking out a monstrosity from the 80s, the Casio DG20. Have you ever wondered what it would sound like if a cheap keyboard had a child with a guitar? Well, we're going to get to the bottom of that age old question soon. But before we get into it, I want to quickly let you know some especially exciting news. As of today, I have just launched a brand new guitar course called Samurai Guitar Theory Beyond the Basics. This course is aimed at the intermediate guitarists looking to take their understanding to the next level. Among the things I look at are more complex chords, a deep dive into modes, it's all professionally animated, there's in-depth documentation, quizzes, lists of things to practice, and more. This initial month, it's 50% off with promo code EARLYBIRD. And if you buy it bundled together with my first course, The Rudiments, you can get both of them for the normal price of one using that same promo code. Links to that are in the description or you can find it at www.samuraiguitartheory.com. Don't forget to use promo code EARLYBIRD. Anyways, on to the weirdness. Today's instrument, the Casio DG20, is truly unlike anything else I've ever seen. It's a plastic digital guitar made in Japan in the late 80s, and it looks like it belongs in a sci-fi movie more than it does my guitar collection. Now playing guitar is pretty simple when you think about it. You put a string into motion by hitting it, producing a sound. That vibration is amplified in one way or another. You do this well, and you're making music. The way that the DG20 works is completely different. Built into this thing is a synthesizer, a piece of technology that digitally generates a sound. The guitar part of it sends information to the synthesizer, telling it what sounds to produce. I'll get into more details in a bit. For now, I think it's best just to show you what this can do. I've got the acoustic guitar setting selected. I'm gonna kick in the drum machine, hit the mood lights, and see what happens. Many guitarists spend thousands of dollars on boutique gear chasing a pure and beautiful tone. I spent $300 on this, and now I sound like a Nintendo Wii menu. Let's go over the features that the spaceship looking freak show has to offer. First of all, there's a drum machine built in. Like you heard, I can select a number of different beats, like reggae for example. I can cue it to do a fill. or I can perform a fill myself using these pads here. Nothing overly exciting or groundbreaking there. I'm personally more interested in the guitar synth side of things. The layout is that of a typical guitar. There are six strings and the rubber fretboard is laid out like a normal one. The strings, however, are plastic and untuned. If I strum them acoustically, it wouldn't really make much of a noise since they're so slack. The way this works is I put my finger on one of the strings on one of the frets, which tells the synthesizer which note I've selected. When I hit the string, it tells the synthesizer to turn on that note. So the way you conceptualize and play this instrument is the same as a normal guitar, but there's nothing acoustically happening. It's all just a bunch of ones and zeros being chucked around inside a computer. Now let me tell you, while you think about it like a normal guitar, you kind of have to play it with a unique touch. It picks up the slightest accidental bumps of a fret or string and plays those notes as loud as the notes that you want to play. So you need to be rather precise and gentle, otherwise it sounds quite ugly. Let me show you what it sounds like if I tried to play this thing like how I play my normal guitars. To me, that sounds like if somebody programmed a robot to play music, but they made a horrible, horrible mistake in the code. Since there's no string tension, I find that playing with a pick doesn't really work. Instead, finger picking offers much more control. Here's that same example that you just heard with significantly more precision. Still isn't amazing by any means, but at least it's coherent. What does make this thing quite fun is the wide range of sounds. Here's a jazz organ, for example. I guarantee you, someone somewhere in 1987 would have played one of these at their Sunday morning church service. And what a sight that would have been. Let's check out another setting. How about distorted guitar? Mm. 
I've made worse sounds in my life. That one was actually pretty fun. Let's try out the mandolin setting. If the boss theme from a vintage NES game sounded like a mandolin, then that would have been pretty dang close. Now, how about my personal favorite? Funky Clavinet. That one setting alone makes this thing worth it. If I retire from YouTube, I'm telling you right now, it's because I've gone out into the world to try to make it as a DG20 funky clavinetist. So that brings us to the point of the video where I give you the official Sammy G review. Ultimately, this is more of a toy than it is a serious instrument. The sounds aren't amazing, but I'm a terrible keyboard player, so to be able to get those synth sounds is really quite fun. It's easy to use. As a guitarist, I find a lot of synths somewhat overwhelming, but with this, there's no technological learning curve. You just turn it on and you're ready to go. You don't even need to plug it into anything. I ran a cable out into my recording software and used the power supply, but there's also a battery pack and a speaker built in in case you want to take it to the campfire. The biggest issue I have with this thing is the playability, which unfortunately prevents it from having any real practical value. Even with quite a bit of practice, it would regularly spew out loud rogue notes. Every example you heard today took me far more takes to get sounding good than normal. Final verdict, it's quite fun to play around with. They're pretty cheap, but if you want the sounds that this thing does in a professional setting, you're better off getting a MIDI pickup or learning to play the piano. To wrap it up, here's a jam I made entirely using sounds from the Casio DG20. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. I want to remind you that my second guitar course, Samurai Guitar Theory Beyond the Basics, has just been released. I'm especially excited to be able to offer something to the intermediate guitar player looking to take their playing to the next level. I never considered myself all that naturally talented. In order to get where I am, I needed to develop a musical system. That system is what I teach in my courses. There's some tougher concepts that I go through like modes and extended chords that many of us struggle with, which is why I hired a professional animator to make those things as clear and intuitive as possible. For this month, Beyond the Basics is 50% off with promo code EARLYBIRD, and if you buy that bundled together with my first course, you can get that one for 50% off as well with the same promo code. You can find that over www.samuraiguitartheory.com. Thank you all for watching. If you want to get caught up in the series where I try out Out of the Ordinary Guitars, you can hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for regular musical content. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a comment and hitting that like button. Until next time, I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I will see you again soon.